everyone. You think I'm kidding with this. This is seriously our team at Purina, the Digital Victims Unit. We have data, analytics, investment, accountability, measurement. We're all part of a team at Purina ensuring brand safety and protecting our investment by inspecting it, frankly. And I wanted to share with you kind of our perspective, certainly, on the topic, but I want to, you know, take off my badge and my gun a little bit and try and find some positive in all of this. So we are currently testing at Purina the co-manage model, which uh, we're working directly with a couple DSPs, as well as our agency trade desk. And we are certainly trying to educate internally. We all know the road to adoption is education. So I surveyed marketing at Purina a little bit to see what, where I was starting from. And about 30% of brand folks have a general good grasp on it. So this is a great example. I think it's getting a more, to a more dynamic way of buying media that allows us to be more targeted towards the households we really want while also giving us flexibility. That makes me feel good. There's some brand folks that get it. But there are a lot of people that frankly have not simply been exposed. So it's not that they are not educated, right? It's my job to educate them. But this is my favorite quote. Sign me up for the lunch and learn. I could make some educated guesses, but in full transparency, it's all new to me. So that kind of gives me a framework from where we're at. So with this test that we're conducting, I thought it would be helpful to share with you um, an analysis of the site level data that we are seeing, inspecting. But like any good researcher, I wanted to share with you my methodology. So it's site level data from all three DSPs that we're working with over the last two months, all brands. So cat, cat food, dog food, treats, litter, the gamut. And as a CPG, we do use a lot of purchase-based targets um, or custom segments to find those audiences. It doesn't account for duplication, so bear with me. Um, and again, I tried to mine for the positive in all of this. And frankly, this is a strategic exercise. It's not a cost analysis. So the findings. The majority of impressions were served on brand safe sites with no concerns of fraud. I, I, I don't know what else to, sit, to say about that. However, you'll see some examples here in a second. But the majority landed on portals, news and weather, even local newspaper and local TV news stations. That's interesting. Gaming, of course, e-commerce, entertainment, gossip, Everybody loves those, those areas, including pet owners. And of course, pet care, pet health, pet entertainment. I know a few of you have some social profiles on catchannel.com. Don't, don't hide it from me. You can see me afterward for some coupons. <laughs> However, this is where I take my gun and put it back in, put my badge back on. 17,250 sites were served impressions. 4% of those sites served 92% of those impressions. This is clearly an example of the long tail effect of the open exchange. So what I wanted to go into now, before I reveal my sites, I just wanted to call out, I am not here to call by name and bust 
any fraudulent sites or those that I think are not brand safe. So I did mask a few of the, of the names. So let's start with this site. Is it brand safe? Well, at first glance, it's not in English. There is a dating, you know, kind of risque dating ad on the homepage. But programmatic is about audiences, and Asian people do own pets. So as I considered this site, I'm OK with it. I might want to investigate it further to consider whether or not I want to continue based on performance. But in general, it's OK. Is this site fraudulent? So on the left is the top half of the page. So, and then the right is the below the fold, above the fold, below the fold. I happen to know that this site has 94% fraudulent activity. So I spent some time surfing around on it and I experienced it. So I noticed that I kept serve, getting served ads that were blank with just the unit size. And that video player on the right there, at the bottom of the page, was muted and was playing in a continuous loop with ads and content. So this is definitely going on our blacklist. This was a really interesting one, mycokerewards.com, because you think about people who love Coke and are willing to sign up for rewards are seriously loyal. Well, that could be a great association. But was, what was interesting is that as I scrolled down, I was served a series of ads that Nestle blocked. So it, so it kind of made me suspicious, but it doesn't make me want to give up on this site. This is a movie review site. A lot of impressions were served on this site. And as I clicked around, it's completely brand safe. But it was strange that I kept getting served movie promotion ads and nothing to do with brand. No brand ads at all. So I might question this site further. This is my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it out because, frankly, yes, Nestle blocked it on my work laptop, so I had to go to my iPad so that I could check out the site. And there's two things interesting about this. I mean, frankly, it, it's a celebrity gossip website. Okay, fine. But there's some great targeting and some horrible targeting at the same time on this page. I do live in South County in St. Louis, so I was targeted with a local ad, cool. I am not pregnant. So that was kind of a miss, but um, Zulily, on the other hand, if someone can introduce me to the person at Zulily who's in charge of retargeting, I would bow down to them. They follow me everywhere, across devices, across browsers. They're in my mobile Yahoo Mail in the French fry ad. Everywhere I go, I can't get away from them. I would love to meet them, but I'd also like to tell them to back off. <laughs> so there is a, a certain something you need uh, to do retargeting well. Um, but this site in general, yes, the name is shocking, uh, but it's just celebrity gossip. And finally, online dating. It's a big business, and consumers are spending tons of time on these sites. And I've found over the last 12 months that we land on these sites a lot. So as I think through the sort of philosophical debate about programmatic, and it's about finding the right audiences where no matter where they are on the internet, are online dating sites okay? People are open to love. Maybe they're open to receiving our message. I don't know, but it's worth consideration because we use these purchase-based targets and we continuously land on these sites. So therefore, it's a perfect case for a private marketplace deal. 
So key takeaways. Yes, we talked about Mr. Matt Spiegel, about programmatic is not um, a strategy, right? It is a tool, but it's the most powerful tool I've seen in a long time that can influence future strategic direction and thinking, not just media, but creative as well. So it's sort of exciting for the brands. I see their eyes light up. And there's a role for site level data because transparency leads to understanding. I want to understand, and it also minimizes fear. And private marketplace deals are certainly important, but I believe there's still a place for the open exchange because I want to continuously learn about the next dating trend. Thanks. So we have a few minutes. I'd like to open it up for anyone who has any questions for Amy. Please don't be shy. Anyone? Uh, right here. Yes. This gentleman. Oh, we'll, we'll bring you a mic. Hi. When you're considering fraud, are you looking at the sites that your ads are on, or are you also looking at the audience that's coming to the websites? Say that again when I'm looking when, at when what? You're, when you're doing, making a fraud consideration, are you looking at the only at the sites that your ads are appearing on, or are you also considering the audience that comes to the websites? Well, certainly uh, that they're, they're related, right? Yeah. One, if I'm tracking a certain audience, heavy wet cat food buyers, I want to know where they're landing. So I certainly can use my site level data to do that analysis, but also I know based on our Google Analytics, if they're coming to our product pages that are about wet cat food, I can also figure out who they are too, so both. Anyone else? Any other questions from the crowd? I have one. It was pointed out yesterday that there has been little to absolutely no talk about creative, and obviously Purina is known for its excellent creative. I'm curious how you guys are going to um, try to tie that in with um, your movement towards programmatic. Tie creative. Well, so the thing is... Or the importance of it with, with programmatic. Right. Um, everybody likes to watch dog and cat videos. <laughs> a lot of people... We have a, actually have a problem on the internet. People like to watch cat videos who aren't cat owners. So some of this targeting stuff you all want to help me with, like, we got to think about that. But creatively, um, yes, I think that there is a place to bring a lot of the rich content that we're starting to produce, like a Dear Kitten. I don't know if you guys have seen that video that BuzzFeed produced for us. And as much as lightly branded that video is, I think there's a lot of ways we can slice and dice it and bring it into the programmatic space and start to get some of those metrics we're looking for. Interesting. What, what would that look like? Or how, how would that manifest itself? Yeah, I mean, um, so my coworker and I, coworkers and I have been talking about this recently, actually. Because of technology, I'm, aver, I'm able to overlay the video right, with some sort of call to action, some sort of next consumer journey action. Um, and so just running the, the Dear Kitten video because it's cute, I'm able to do more on top of it and start to lead people down that journey to purchase. Excellent. Um, are there any other questions from the crowd? All right. Thank you very much, Amy. Thanks.